feels good. <laughs> so, so I begin with, of course, the important thing. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And also, and also with, with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I do want to begin with uh, quite a few thanks. Uh, we had a big week last week. If you go back to uh, last Sunday, we had a Mother's Day brunch then, of course. And, uh, and then um, Monday, we had our um, community supper. Tuesday, we had our veterans lunch. I think it was actually something last Saturday, too, although it's kind of floating away from my head at this moment. And, uh, oh, the spring fling. And, uh, and then yesterday, we had our uh, cleanup day. And so a lot of folks did a lot of things. And as we noted last time, and as one cannot say too often, uh, Bob Rendrick was kind of leading us in all of those things. And so maybe we could give Bob just a round of applause. So. <laughs> but. And as a matter of time, I don't want to spend too much time on the work day, but I'll just say, as you, you may have noticed as you came in, there's some uh, work out front as we've pulled up some bush, we, I use the term loosely, pulled up some uh, bushes and we'll of course uh, replant some other things. Other jobs that were done were more subtle, so just as one example, um, uh, Carol and Pat were cleaning up the chairs, you know, vacuuming and working on stains, and so you don't necessarily notice that, but you know that things look better. And so there's a lot of that kind of work that happened yesterday as well. So, uh, so thanks to everybody who's a part of that and for all of those things. Uh, one last bit of thanks. So today, uh, Mary Moore is going to actually uh, do the sermon, and she's going to talk about a mission trip that she did. She went to Jamaica with Food for the Poor. This is back in last December, so more on that when she's speaking. Uh, but what we'll do, we have had a relationship with Food for the Poor for the last several years, so as I think people maybe know, but uh, Food for the Poor is a group that raises money for hunger, as you might guess from the name, but also more broadly to do things like housing, education, clean water, especially in the Caribbean. And, uh, and so we've taken up collections in the past, we'll do that again. And so if you'd like to contribute to Food for the Poor, you can always do that online at Food for the Poor. But if you want to do that through St. David's, in the next couple of weeks, if you would make the donation, just make sure it's clear it's for food for the poor, and we'll send that off all probably maybe three weeks. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and we have flowers, and the flowers are for all mothers, but also mother figures. That's to say all women. So if you want a flower, and actually given our numbers today, if you want two flowers, after the service, come up and get a flower or two. Uh, Kim? Yeah. And, and just leave one for the priest. <laughs> yeah, so, so flowers and chocolate for the mothers and mother figures. Yeah, we'll have plenty. So, so. All right. And Linda? Yeah, Mother's Book Club, Women's Book Club will meet next Sunday. So, right. Everybody got that? Women's Book Club, next Sunday they'll be in the community room. Anything else? Our service will begin in just a moment. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals. To number 450. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 6. <laughs>
Our service this morning continues on the screen, perhaps, and also on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And let us pray together the Collect for Purity, which is at the bottom of page 355. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with the collect, which I think is on the screen, also on the insert, the contemporary version. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. We continue with the praise song. Please turn in your bright blue St. David songbooks to number 33. 33. <laughs> be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Acts 
chapter 1, 15 through 17, and 21 through 26. In those days, Peter stood upon, up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture has to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of the, these must become a witness with us to his resurrection so that they propose to Joseph called Barabbas who was also known as Justius and Matthias then they prayed and said Lord you know everyone's heart show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 1. You can also find it on page 585 in the Book of Red Common Prayer. We are going to read it in unison. Happy are, are they, they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything, Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The second reading for today is from 1 John chapter 5 verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I come from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to this world, just as I do not belong to this world. I am not asking you to take them out of this world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Good morning. Thank you again, Father Harvey. There should be pictures up on the screen behind me, but if not, we have these booklets scattered around. They will be on the table in the narthex after the service. I recently had the opportunity to go to Jamaica on a mission trip that was sponsored by Food for the Poor a non-denominational Christian relief organization. When I got their email last spring, it felt as though a Christmas present had been dropped in my lap. It described activities such as visiting schools, a home for disabled children, an orphanage in a homeless shelter, and building a house in a day, all things I knew I would enjoy doing. The trip spanned a five-day period the first and last day being travel days, and the three middle days being the meat of the trip. There were 13 volunteers and two group leaders, one from the States and the other a native Jamaican. Day one, after we enjoyed a good breakfast at the hotel, we piled onto our minibus and headed for a homeless shelter in one of the rougher neighborhoods of the city. There we joined the clients in prayer and hymns for a little while before serving breakfast to them. We got to chat with them for a bit before getting a tour of the facility. When our tour was over, we went to Food for the Poor's Jamaican headquarters to work on packing bags of food for families in need. The massive warehouse consisted of three or four huge buildings for housing food, building supplies, and other materials. Together, the 15 people in our group packed over 100 sacks of food, weighing about 20 pounds each. Each bag consisted of about a month's supply of staples, such as dried peas, 
rice, cans of meat and fish, powdered milk, flour, cornmeal, and crackers. Working in 90 plus degree heat for several hours, it was a challenge just to stay hydrated, but we made our quota and then some. Two days later, we would be hand delivering all this food at some local schools. The final visit that day was to a home for disabled children. Having worked with this population before, that is special needs children whose disabilities ranged from mild to extreme, I was not at all shocked by the extent of the problems that these children and their caretakers experienced. I suspect that some of my fellow missioners were though. Many of the children were nonverbal, confined to wheelchairs and unable to feed themselves. Others were high functioning enough that were they living in the United States, they may have been able to live at home. But Jamaica is a poor country where a support system such as we enjoy does not exist. Day two, building a house. A lot of sweat, a lot of hammering nails and painting, a lot of drinking water with packets of electrolytes added, and a lot of gratification at a nearly finished product at the end of the day. The food for the poor construction crew still had some finished inside work to do, but we had a painted, watertight house complete with windows, a solid door, indoor plumbing, and a small solar panel on the roof to give to a 66-year-old widow who until recently had spent years working as an orange picker at a nearby grove. In fact, the grove's owner is the one who wrote the recommendation for her to get the house. As thankful as she was to the construction crew and to us, she was, rightfully, more grateful to God and would not go into the house until after we had said a prayer and did a house blessing. Day three. On our last full day, we visited a regular elementary school, a second one for students with discipline issues, and an orphanage. At all three places, we had a chance to interact with children for an extended period of time. Our visits to the schools coincided with the arrival of parents to whom we had the pleasure of distributing the 100 plus bags of food that we had packed a few days earlier. I appreciated that there was absolutely no shaming of the recipients as we sometimes see in the United States. At the orphanage, we learned that some of the children were not true orphans but had come from households that for one reason or another could not support them. In other words, in addition to caring for orphans, the Jamaican orphanages perform the functions that our foster care system does. Also, as in this country, once a girl or boy turns 18 years old, they are dropped from the system. With little to no safety nets to help, these young adults have little chance to break the cycle of poverty. My reflections. Did this trip change me? While I did not see anything in Jamaica that I had not witnessed firsthand in this country, I was overwhelmed by the extent of the poverty. But I was also impressed by the amount of hope I saw in the people that I met. It seemed as though they were truly trying to build for the future, as evidenced by their commitment to education. Would I go again? Yes, if I had the money, but I would rather someone else from the diocese got to go a first time than for me to go a second time. I also think that somebody who is younger than I, that's more than you might think, would be more profoundly changed by a mission ship. As I mentioned earlier, I did not see anything in Jamaica that I had not already seen here, whereas a younger person might not be able to make that same claim. In addition, there are plenty of local Pioneer Valley programs to keep me busy. To quote a Franciscan booklet, Feast of Feasts, 
You can make a big difference in the world if you realize that the world you are talking about might be very small, maybe just one or two people. If you can find a place to serve, you can be happy. What did I enjoy? My favorite activity was building a house in a day, partially because that had more of an impact than simply visiting places. It involved more doing and less observing, and I got to work with my hands. In the morning, the widow was living in a hovel. By 4 or 5 p.m., she had a brand new two-bedroom house. It was wonderful. Have, have we seen them? Okay. What did I, excuse me, as a retired teacher, naturally I enjoyed the interactions with the children we met at the schools, the orphanage, and the home for disabled children. Putting together the sacks of food gave us a very concrete sense of the enormity of the need to fight hunger. The foods we packed were bare bone necessities such as flour, cornmeal, rice, dried peas, and a little bit of canned meats. I valued this activity not only because it provided us with a chance to help, but for its eye-opening effect. The recipients of this food were destitute. I appreciated that the group was non-denominational, but all Christian churches, and that we were not supposed to get too preachy. Most of us followed that rule. The length of the trip seemed a little short, but we did manage to pack a lot into just three days of activity. I liked, too, that we started each day on the bus with a prayer. This was a good reminder of why we were there in the first place. My other thoughts? It would be nice if once a year the diocese or perhaps a group of different denomination churches in this area could sponsor someone preferably in his or her 20s or 30s, to go on one of these mission trips. And we might consider sending a different person each year. Thank you, and uh, I'll be out buzzing around in the narthex during coffee hour if anybody has any questions. Check and let out. us thank Mary. wonderful work that Mary and the group are doing. So now please stand as you're able and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find that on the screen and also page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, 
for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. From the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Burundi, for our bishop, and for all the clergy and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. From our diocesan cycle of prayer this week, we pray for St. Andrew's Slum Meadow, beloved community commission, Evangelican Education Society, National Episcopal AIS Association, for our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. This week we pray especially for Kuwait from our world prayer cycle, for this town of Aguam, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For St. David's, and from our parish prayer cycle for the development and budget teams, Delma Gardner, the Glistus, Grants, Sandy Hamill, the Hapax, the Holloways, and the Hansons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Gil and for all the people on our prayer list, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We give thanks for mothers and mother figures and for Bob Rendrick and everyone who helps with our community supper, veterans lunch, and work day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the communion of blessed David and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another. Peace, 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 peace. Peace to all in the choir. Peace to Jim. Peace way in the back. Peace to the whole Liberty clan. 
to the faves. Peace to Sue and Missy. Peace to the guy. Peace to, <laughs> peace to Terry. And after you have a chance to greet folks to your satisfaction, have a seat while Terry sets the table. So before we turn to the great Thanksgiving, I know we have at least a couple of birthdays to pray over this week. So, so I gather, I learned this morning that the famous Max, Terry's grandson's birthday was yesterday. And also I think the Seabury's son-in-law, Kevin, his birthday was also yesterday. And Paul Fontaine's birthday is this week. So, and are there other birthdays? And Valerie? And which is also, I think, Paul's, right? Isn't it? And also, so, and, uh, oh, right, and Jane Nunn, the much, much Miss Jane. And Valerie, what is your uh, son's name? And also Christopher. So other birthdays? Let us pray together the birthday prayer, which is, uh, should be on the screen, also page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And any anniversaries? Oh, what did I say? Happy birthday. And happy birthday. And happy birthday. <laughs> the, uh, any uh, anniversaries to pray over this week? And Tara? No, for the Freemans. Yeah. So should, should we ask how many years it's been? 54. 54 years, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so let us, or, and others? So let's pray together the anniversary prayer for the Freemans, which again may be on the screen, page 431 in the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. 
Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And happy anniversary. So we continue with Eucharistic Prayer A. That begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. And the beginning bit, but only the beginning bit on the screen. And of course we do offer this Eucharist in, in honor and thanksgiving for all of our mothers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sit as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for you the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Now, please stand as you're able and let us pray together the post communion prayer on the screen, also on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 494. 494. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. 